Welcome to Math Tutorials. In today's lesson, we're going to take a look at testing claims about means with sigma unknown. And in this case, um, remember, if sigma is known, it's a z test. Um, and if sigma is unknown, it's a t test. So we're talking about testing claims about means, about mu, uh, in the situation where it's a t test and t distributions. And specifically, we're going to look at uh, finding p-values when we know a test statistic. So we're going to take a look at a problem from our text, which is uh, the 11th edition of uh, Elementary Statistics by Triola. And this is page 439. And we're going to look at number 9, uh, finding p-values in exercises 9 through 12, use technology or table A3 to find a range of values for the p-value. And we're going to go through both of those methods in this video. So the scenario here is about M&Ms, and we're testing a claim about the mean weight of M&Ms. It's a right-tailed test, we're told, with n equals 25, and a test statistic t equals 0 0.430. So let's write those things down uh, first. So we've got uh, right tailed, we've got n equals 25, and we've got t equals 0 0.430. Now the first thing is to know that we're dealing with a, a t distribution. So you can draw it, it looks a lot like a normal distribution. And it had 0 in the middle. So this is our t distribution. Now we're told that the test statistic is 0 0.430 and well 0 is your middle score here and positive values are to the right and negative to the left so 0 0.430 is going to be somewhere over here. Okay so we're going to mark that. 0 0.430 is our test statistic. Okay so from there we're supposed to find uh, the p-value. Okay. And when you've got the test statistic, the p-value um, is going to be determined, it's going to be an area, but it's going to be determined by the uh, side or tail of the test. Is it right-tailed, left-tailed, or two-tailed? In our case, we're told that it's right-tailed, and that means when you've got your test statistic over here, you're looking for the area to the right. So I'm going to shade it here. That area is the p-value. Okay. So we're looking for the area to the right of 0 0.430. And there's several different ways you can find that. Uh, let's go through both of them. Uh, first is by the TI-83 or 84 graphing calculator. Okay, what you do there is you go to the uh, distribution menu. So hit second vars to go to distribution. And then you choose uh, Number f I think it's number 5, it's number 5 on my TI-83, but the important thing is you're going to choose the one that says T CDF. Okay, and then there's three things you put in here. You put in the uh, starting uh, T score for your uh, area, and then you put in the ending T score, and that could be, an, in one of these, either one of these could be an infinity if the area continues on in either direction. And then you're going to put the uh, degrees of freedom, which in the t distribution is n minus 1. Well, in our case, you're going to go t cdf, and if you look at the area here, it starts at 0 0.430, and then it continues on this way to the right. It never ends, so it's the area continuing on. We type e99 to represent positive infinity. And to do that, you hit uh, your second and the comma button to get to E and then 99. So 0 0.430 E99. Hitting second and then comma button. And then you're going to do the, do the degrees of freedom. We were told at the beginning up here, N is 25. So N minus 1 is going to be 24. Okay, so you just take that and you punch that all into your calculator and see what you get. And I'm coming out with 0.3355 and that's our p 
p-value for this right-sided test. Okay, so that's one way to do it. This is the way if you have the uh, graphing calculator and it gives you a specific value. If you do the table, table A3 is the uh, t-value table. This is going to give you a range of values. It's not going to give you a specific value. It's going to give you a range of values uh, for your p-value. Okay, so let's go through how to do this on the table. Um, what you actually start with on the table is you start with your degrees of freedom, which we know is 24, and you start with the uh, t-value, your t-score, which is 0 0.430. And what you're going to want to do is uh, locate the closest thing you can find in table A3. Uh, table A3 is on that uh, tear out uh, table insert that comes with the book, or it's also in the back in the appendices on page 754. And if you take a look at this, um, it's the t distribution, critical t values. In the left column is degrees of freedom. And then over here we've got the areas, the names of the columns here. Uh, area in one tail, area in two tails, and then we've got the actual t values within the table here in the middle. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to be concentrating on degrees of freedom 24. Okay, so I'm going to scroll this up and we're going to take a look at the very top of the screen here at 24 degrees of freedom, and these are the different uh, t values. Okay. Well, maybe I'll move it back down here so we can see up, up above, okay? So what we want to do is try to find the uh, closest T value to what we have. Now, our score is 0 0.430. And if you look under 24 degrees of freedom down here, all of these scores are quite a bit higher than 0 0.430. But if we're asked to find the closest one we can get, the closest one is the lowest one, 1.318. Okay, so just think about that for a minute. We'll take that as our closest value. So at 1.318, read up top, we're looking at a one-tailed test. So it says the area in one tail is 0 0.10, 0 0.1. All right, so in other words, with a t-score of 1.318, the area is 10% or 0.10. Now, this actually gives us a, a guide, an estimate for the size of our particular p-value or area. Let me show you. If we go back to our picture here, the t-score we were just talking about was 1.318. Well, look at look at our picture, and here's our score, 0 0.430. 1.318 1 is somewhere over here to the right, so let's say over here. Let's say that's 1.318. Well, what we just learned from the table is that the area to the right of 1.318 this little piece in here, I'm going to shade it solid in red, that is 10% according to the table. Okay, well remember what we want is we want all of this area here, right? All of the area to the right of our score. And that includes this little 10% uh, that we just saw. It's more than that. It's bigger. You can see it's 10% here plus whatever is there. So clearly our area is bigger than 10%. And then that's all we get. We just get that estimate. So we estimate that the p-value um, from that table is greater than 10%. And that's all you really get. You don't get a specific number like you do by the calculator. We got 33.3355 by calculator, but we only get greater than 10% um, by the table. But usually that's good enough because if you go through the process of what you do with the p-value, you compare it to the level of significance alpha afterwards, and alpha is usually 1% or 5% or 10%, and then this is good enough. If you know the p-value is greater than 10%, then you can use this to compare it to whatever your alpha value may be, and then in the end make your decision uh, based on the p-value. Okay, so this wraps up our tutorial. It was basically going through by calculator or by table how you could find a uh, p-value from a t-distribution if you know the test statistic.